Um, so I'm going to continue with the, this uh, train of thoughts. Uh, in my talk will focus on how and when AI augments employee prediction. <coughs> so it's not going to be like a Hollywood movie where you know the AI robots come to destroy human society and outsmart human creativity. And that's not what I'm going to do. So we're going to do the opposite. Uh, we take it AI as part of the inputs, helping human society where they can augment employee creativity. So that's the task uh, we're trying to embark on. Uh, this is joint work with Ananja. Uh, she's uh, sitting in the back over there. Um, also my other co-authors, and Zen and uh, Chen Chen at Citra University. Uh, my name is Xuemi Lu at Temple. I have a center on AI and the business and it is. So, um, it's a plugin for our center research. The element of AI is amazing. Offer us a lot, lots of diverse and exciting opportunities. Um, this conference, uh, the, the thanks for organizers, and really put a, a very great program as you see diverse topics. Um, for example, in my center, what we did, we start with the customer data analytics. Um, back in the days, we talked about AI chatbot uh, disclosure. That's a, as a marketing science a publication. And then nowadays we'll use a uh, machine learning algorithm to, to detect uh, what the social media posts on Instagram, uh, on Twitter, they are really BLM related, uh, Black Lives um, you know, BLM, social movements. And then we use bird model to uh, predict that social uh, media topics. And also we have another project on LGBTQ, uh, similar ideas. Uh, then move on to the employee side. Uh, there's a huge amount of opportunity as well. We look at how a firm adopt AI technology and then the workforce change, uh, the job uh, productivity, productivity, of course, but also have their perceptions and how they uh, treat the AI recommendations um, at the workplace. So this paper is about the uh, human AIT and uh, the creativity. So this is first coming at AMJ. If my presentation is not complete, so please go to the website and you'll see the full paper over there. There are a bunch of other papers. If you are interested in the details, just drop me an email. Um, back to this paper, it's, it's not surprising for everyone us here. Uh, the AI technology is going to increase labor productivity. So the finding is exciting because it's equivalent to 10% of GDP when the AI robots come to uh, helping us, and then we can boost our human work efficiency of doing the job. Now, most of the prior research focus on the problems for which the solution is already known. So the, if you think about the AI, there's the hard part is about big data training. So the AI algorithm can detect the hidden pattern, so this knowledge graph. So once we know the knowledge graph, then we treat the answers that AI do much better than human beings, right? Because they can retrieve reliably, accurately, without much error, without fatigue. Humans were good in the morning, but they were pretty tired in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, so the efficiency is very high for AI. Now, the implication is AI may replace human in those jobs. Mm -hmm. So, let's have a bit of the connotation which we do not like. Uh, in general, it depends on which perspective. Uh, by contrast, our paper here focuses on problem where the solutions are unknown. You do not know. So, that's where you need creativity. Uh, the implication is very important because uh, we need to create a new solution for the problem that's creativity is at the core. Where we implicate is AI is going to augment human intelligence. Um, so, specifically, we'll focus on AI human team, where this AI is going to take care of the repetitive tasks, uh, codifiable. Anything you can script those jobs, and those will be AI is going to be able to take it, and then the rest of the jobs, uncodified, will be humans. If you think about that, call center is the really first industry that really jump to this kind of AI chatbot, right? Think about it, your call, your come to here, if you in the airplane, uh, somehow your flight seats messed up, and probably 80% chance is a chatbot deal with you. Uh, Amazon, all kinds of industries, financials, um, 
It's very simple heuristic, right? 80% of the time, your questions are FAQ, frequently asked questions. Well, for Amazon, for example, I'm off my package, uh, I need a return, the, the project shift was not right. This stuff, the textbook, the chatbot can deal with that automatically. You don't need to ask name to human agents. So that's what they do in the industry. Um, beyond the cost centers, you get an AI medical study where AI assistants could be doing a simple stuff, nurse stuff, right? So you get to do triage, where the patients come to the hospital, the AI can take the, your blood pressure, your vitals, and then send you a specialist, right? So the last mile, the human doctor skills are highly needed. And then you can do hiring. We, we heard a lot of talks. Um, uh, Emma did a very good job uh, in the morning. So what is in the AI helping filtering, right, funneling those job applicants? There are millions of job applicants each year apply for the single company PNG. How did PNG HR manage to manage that? Well, we use the AI to screen, shortlist people, and then the real HR manager will take care of the shortlist. So that's the setting we're going to do. We make some predictions. Um, when the AI handles quantified repetitive portion of work, there are two things can happen for employees. First, the, the employees can got save time, right? Because those um, those the first the repetitive jobs are basically some yes and no questions. Take a lot of your time. So you can save your time when you have more time. Uh, when you have more energy, you have a burst of creativity. That makes sense. The second prediction would be interest and motivation. So humans, we don't really like boring, repetitive tasks every day. We love challenges. We like interesting stuff, creative work, to show my talents, to show my skills, to solve some problems not that easy to be solved. I feel valued. I feel self-esteem in myself. That's interesting. Motivating them to move up. That also helps increase creativity. So that's our first expectation. Would it be with the AI systems, uh, the creativity will be up for the human workers. Second will be a boundary condition. It will be heterogeneity between the top and the bottom agents. So the top agents that have more skills, the domain knowledge is very important. So. When we talk about the increased uh, interest and motivation and conserved energies due to the AI systems, those are going to matter more for top agents because they can solve the problem on hand. We're matter less for those bottom agents because bottom agents are rookies, new hire. They're not there yet. right? So all the same time will not really matter that much. So our second expectation would be the delta, the increase of creativity, will be much stronger for the top agents. Um, the, pro the performance implication is very straightforward. Higher creativity, it must be higher performance. That's good for the company as well. How do we go to test this with cost evidence? Uh, we run RCT. We go to, we're lucky to find a company. Uh, we run field experiment. It's a high tech marketing company as a call center. They have over 10 million customers in telecom business and other business. And they, at the time, they tried to introduce a new product, which is credit card business. So they want to call the customers, are you willing to buy a new you know, credit card? Just open that account and use that you know, product. Now, they can do this task two type of agents. Right, one of the AI chatbot, not every human agents as normal. So the technology, the AI here is an AI chatbot. You can nowadays generate AI is talk most most of the time. You talk about uh, GPD, chat GPD, which is text NLP basically, essentially, right? So for this, uh, we're running this uh, some eighty years ago. We use a little bit of chatbot where uh, we use both voice and text. So it's multimodal in that sense. So first you have the voice recognition because there's a sales conversation over the phone between the agents and the customer. Somebody's calling, right? So you have the voice 
revelation, your text-to-speech and speech-to-text back and forth to engage conversation AI with the customers. So that's a technology uh, we used at the time. The training data is a 10 terabytes of call sounding data, call center data. So that's an advantage. Uh, at the time, it's not fancy as a GPD here. Why? Because GPD is amazing cross domain. That's amazing. At the time, we only have single domain, which is call center, but that business. Uh, we have uh, large training data and the algorithm, as we suggest that NLP, those are uh, really commonplace. Um, so the task here is the AI human team. It's a very simple. Uh, the chatbot can outreach customers and call customers, maybe staff know, uh, you know, are you interested in this product? I give you a deal, I give you a promotion, and that's we call it outreach. And then staff know as a customer, I always say, okay, who was there? No, I don't like this. No, I like this, or I don't need this. So it's just simple yes or no questions, and that part AI can take care of very good. This repetitive task, right? So that we call it interest confirmed or not. Once Stefano is confirmed, potential customer will be passed on to Emma. Um, and Emma will be the human agent, will be the expert, and she will do the persuasion. Please, Stefano, you open the credit card. <laughs> right? So that's the setting we're going to do. So lead generation is repetitive task script. FAQ, you know the mom's graph very well. Um, and then uh, there's a chatbot. You pass a Turing test uh, for two to three minutes conversation. So that if we do not tell customers, they do not know this uh, human or it's an AI chatbot. So it was a really good technology. Um, so the first stage task, this is the same training for AI and human. So as I said, so the basic task is both AI and human agents when you call reach out to like customers to, Sami or you know Ama, and then calling for you know this is a uh, company, the call center, and then here's the promotion message. Customer can say no a couple of times, right? So we, the idea is trying to get the first stage goal, confirm customer interest. Um, so there are more than 3,100 uh, customers randomly assigned. So the customer energy randomized away. So uh, causality can come and out uh, across the four groups. Uh, the lead generation group uh, depends on the two type of agents, with AI or their uh, human agents. Human agents, you have two type of top of oh, oh, agents. And in the sales persuasion, the more complex, uncodified stage, second stage, are all human agents. So it depends on top of body. So you have these four combinations. <coughs> Now the first goal we want you to do is we want to get the creativity, right? That's the core, deep in the variable. How we get creativity? Well, this will be NLP, right? Once you have the text to uh, speech to text, they have a bunch of scripts, and then we can gauge the conversation between the agents and the customer, and then we can um, we can detect two type of questions. On the right type would be uh, within knowledge bank. So this would be very easy, right? You just calculate the seminary score uh, with the knowledge bank, knowledge graph for when we developed it for the chatbot. So if a very similar, that's not a creativity task. Then we go to the left side where outside the knowledge bank. So they give you an example of this question is untrained, uncodified. So this is a cross-domain question. Uh, example, the customer wants to say, you know, can I, if I buy this new product, I right, open this credit card, can I use that to pay my house? That's not a typical question, it's like, uh, what's your interest rate? Like those stuff, right? So, uh, we use the company manager, experience manager, to determine uh, this is a novel and useful um, solution to those questions. The, the question from the customers. So the final creativity measure is a ratio of untrained questions that were successfully resolved uh, by the agents. So successfully means not one useful. Now here's the results. Um, so the 
The dependent variable here, or the y-axis here, is creativity ratio. And you have two bars here. It's pretty self-evident that AI assist agents were 2.33 times more creative in solving this outside, outside of the knowledge game questions. So that's a creativity measurement. And then we look at the heterogeneity. Uh, in that depends on top and bottom agents. Top agents are, if you think about this across center, the top agents will be probably more than work for more than one year, have more experience uh, at the uh, workplace. And then the bottom agent will be rookies and new hires. You'll see that bottom agents, they increase a little bit. Right? It's marginally significant. So with AI help for this repetitive task, they do benefit on average. But the bigger benefit is top agents. They increase, have a bigger burst in job criteria. They come up with new solutions for the problems um, asked from the customers. So you may think a lot of alternative explanations because this is two-stage experimentation, two-stage task over there. Remember that we do have uh, stage one will be lead generation. If the selection happened during this stage, that will be alternative explanation for stage two, self-persuasion. That's where the creativity comes from, that's it. So we have to check one thing, that's the um, first stage conversion rate. Does it confirm the interest level? Are you interested in the product, right? Uh, so across the four groups are similar, so we do not see a selection of customer type into the second stage. The second alternative explanation we want to rule out is the number, the sheer number of questions asked in stage two. It's because of the stage two have more productivity because they have more opportunity, the more customers ask of weird questions. So we rule that out because of all the um, number of outside knowledge bank questions, the quantity are the same across four groups. So we believe that it is the quality of the uh, solution, the creativity, the novelty, and the usefulness of these answers from stage two uh, drive this result. So what's the mechanism? Uh, we theorized that in the, in the, in the beginning, uh, we still want to augment our evidence with additional data, which come from in-depth interview. Um, so we spend a lot of time for interviewing those real employees who use this technology. I average about 70 minutes for the in-depth interview. In terms of, they told us a lot of interesting story. So in terms of interest and motivation, they feel better mood. Once the AI helped me to deal with the yes, no, simple, repetitive questions, they feel really much better. And, and then the morale is higher. They even feel pride in the company because the company really is a good technology. <laughs> to think about it, me, right? So I'm going to work harder for the company. Uh, the sense of freedom, I, of course, save the more time and mental power. And this benefits is more evident for top employees. Uh, we will also interview the lower skill, the bottom ones, the rookies. It takes about at least one year for these rookies to get more proficient. Um, during the process, there's no skill to feel the opposite. They have a higher work pressure and also have a lower morality. Some of them really demoralize uh, because of this new technology. You feel threatened, basically. The company is in, the technology is so advanced, the passing during tests, what is going to be my job, right? Um, so we look at the performance, that's not surprising. With the AI assistance, um, you're going to have higher performance. Um, so the treatment of AI assistance could be increased creativity, and the increased creativity will bring more benefits, uh, performance uh, to the company, to the employees. So in conclude, the, um, we believe these findings are interesting in the sense that uh, prior research really has talked about, alert us about AI may replace humans. Uh, but here we create a scenario where there's augment so let the AI and the human work together. Now, has to be, there's a there's a caveat, right? AI can only work with the best. Today's weak AI technology works the best where that repetitive FAQ task. As long as you can think about the heuristic about the company task, 
and those technology can handle very well. And the humans, we don't like this boring job. We love challenge job. That's where we put the humans do this more complex and uncodified uh, portion of the work. And the major implication is uh, well, think of the beyond the efficiency productivity, not think about more creativity. Uh, and the design uh, has to be appropriate. So uh, when you start Q and A, I think we're uh, out. So, so we may have time for one one question. Yeah.